Hello, it's Lee with AppointmentReminder.com. Um, wanted to go through how to build a booking page and or online scheduler. Uh, a lot of you may be familiar with Calendly or other similar apps to allow individuals to book time on your calendar. Now this can be done for individuals uh, and or businesses to schedule times uh, that people can, can book appointments with you. Um, and here is our demo page here where most people find us. Uh, you can go through this and see uh, that you can add some services here. And we're going to walk through this, but I'm just showing you what it looks like uh, prior to. So the service uh, that are available, uh, you simply just select it and then hit continue. When that does that, that will check the calendar available times and display them on the calendar here for individuals to go into and select a time slot. So a lot of customization that goes along with this. Um, so wanted to step through it and show you all how this works a little bit uh, more in depth. Um, so we're going to head over to appointmentreminder.com and all this information in these pages are found under the booking page. Um, and it's kind of a one, two, three step process here. First, we're going to start by building a service uh, for the clients. Uh, so these are the first available drop down options so here. Choose a service. Um, this could be anything you want it to be a 30 minute phone call, a tax review, a demo, uh, anything your heart can dream of. Uh, that's what we're going to build first. So we got to build the service first. The next we're going to build availability and then some confirmation information. So same thing here. We're going to build services first. We're going to kind of build out the availability and then we're going to finalize the booking page that uh, we'll get a URL link to send to our clients. Um, there's some additional advanced information here, but we're going to really just focus on getting the page set up and getting it going. So step one, we're going to go into services here. And we're simply just going to make a service. So um, let's just call this demo with Lee. And the description information that you put in is the information that's going to display here on the right hand side of the page for the clients. So you can just write whatever, but uh, just so you can see it once we build it out. The event duration um, simply is how long we're going to block time on the calendar for. You can do a custom um, or, and or selection here. And then the display length will change the increments of time that a client can book time on the calendar for you. So if you want it to display every 15 minutes versus every hour uh, on time blocks that they can book with you, you can do that. Days in advance the booking can be made. This is kind of a good one to be aware of. How far out in advance you want uh, individuals to be able to book an appointment with you. Uh, just be aware if you if you are blocking vacation time or are not blocking vacation time or out of office days, uh, this can get tricky if you have somebody book an appointment with you and you're going to be out of the office. You need to make sure that you're booking uh, the time off or blocking the time off on your calendar. Allow the appointment changes up to. Uh, this is just allowing the client to make a change to it. How many buffer before uh, the event? So, you know, if you don't want your points to get stacked right on top of each other, put a little buffer there in time after the event. So if you need like 15 minutes, 30 minutes to clean up, you'd want to do that. Minimum notice would be the time prior to the event that they can book. So, you know, if you don't want somebody booking an appointment within two hours of them and then just showing up, um, a lot of people would sit like one day um, and then that's a little more time. Bookings to be approved before confirming. Um, so this uh, option would allow you to say, yes, we're going to allow you to book that appointment with us before actually having the appointment be made. And then this to send a confirmation email. How many hours prior to the appointment should we send the reminder? Um, you can use what your regular calendar settings are. Um, you can have a custom setting here. This is kind of where it interplays back with the point reminder. And then ask clients for their address, just different options here. And if you do have a Zoom account uh, and or Google, you can attach that here. Um, you can ask additional booking questions. So if you need specific information, like how much money they made or, you know, what type of service they are using, you can add a bunch of different questions here 
this is to the page when they are filling out their information. So uh, we're just going to go with the default information here. And now we have a booking uh, that is made for us. And this is a service. Now, the next thing we need to do is tell the booking system or the, the calendar system, which calendar do we want to look at? In this case, we're going to just run it off this test calendar. And all we're doing here is saying for this service demo with Lee, the days that Lee is going to be open to take those demos. So we're just going to say Wednesday and we can enter whatever particular time. So 10 a.m. And we're going to end it at uh, 2 p.m. And attendees per time slot um, doesn't really matter here. You could have 20. Uh, it's not going to allow multiple um, appointments during that time. It just allows more people to be in the um, the the appointment. It doesn't really matter when you're doing this. So then you can go ahead and hit save here. So now what we did there is allowed our booking page to check my calendar, my test calendar at 10 a.m. on Wednesday to book times. Um, and then be aware here, block off all day events. This is set to on, which is what you do want if you're blocking time for vacations or out of office time. That will make sure nobody gets uh, an appointment on those times. Next step from there is we're going to go to the booking page. And we're going to click add here. And this is where we're actually building out this whole interface uh, to get the URL for our client. So we're just going to call this whatever we want, but we're going to call it appointment reminder demo booking. And the page name can be, you know, it's going to uh, bring that information down. And then the calendars, we're going to say it's using the test calendar. That's the calendar it's backing up to or using the check for time available. Um, there is an option here which would allow clients to book which calendar. Uh, to book it on. So what that does is it adds another drop down here under service. Um, a good example of that would be if you have a different location that the client can uh, book at and or if you have different, um, say, providers, um, then they can choose who they're going to provide with. And then that will back up to their calendar once they select a calendar that they're going to book on. Um, then there's some just different logic here. All calendars must be free at the requested date and time. Uh, booking will be available if any calendar has its available date and time. This kind of goes back to like if you have multiple calendars plugged in here. In this case, the default's going to be fine. Uh, we'll take that. Um, there's some other logic here that you can set. Uh, the booking type is just going to be a demo with Lee. And then address where new booking should be emailed to. So they're going to email me once somebody goes to the page and makes a booking. Um, also allow bookings with appointments that contain any of these words. I don't really use that. I'm not sure what that is. Allow clients to externally redirect. No big deal. And then if we have a choose a, a logo, we can simply just uh, put our logo in here. And let's just see if I can find something real quick. Uh, my pretty Jeep. And um, we're going to set it active. So now we're going to hit save here. And we just created our very first booking page. Now, to see what we what we did, um, we could hit the preview link. And it's going to open it. And I don't think you can see the URL string. But it just took the page name and put it right in front of booking. Uh, and I'll put that in the information down below. So uh, the page name that you call it, so you could call this, uh, you know, appointments. Your clients will be able to visit this particular uh, HTTP address. This is the one that you would give your, your clients. So this may be really long. You might just want to call it like, uh, I don't know, appointment demo. And then it will update that. See, now I can see... Uh, what the URL is going to be that I need to give my clients uh, once once I'm ready to do this. Okay, so now we've got the page built. Um, if I need to edit it, delete it, preview, I can copy the link and that will take give me the link to put on my website and or I can embed it in a website if I've got that as well. Um, from there, that's pretty much it. Now I have a page uh, to booking 
and we're going to go to booking pages again just to make sure we got the right link and then we're going to hit preview now we can see appointment demo booking continue it's going to check my test appointment you can see uh, time available Wednesday the 15th which already happened so the next available time would be next Wednesday at 10 to 2 like we have set the client will be able to hit the button complete their information this is that page uh, when you're um, putting on your service that you can uh, kind of add more information to they'll complete the booking and then lastly you have the confirmation pages so once you come back into appointment reminder and you'll you'll be able to see whoops, uh, the confirmation email templates that are going to be sent out. So uh, under email templates, there's demo with Lee. That's that's the booking they would be able to make. And then you could hit edit. So when the booking is confirmed, this is the email that would be going out. If we ended up changing it or if we declined, canceled or pending, all different options here that you can put your information into and change for your particular use and or business. Um, lastly, some other things to be aware of on here are some of the advanced settings. Uh, this is where you can change some of the appointment descriptions and information that flows back over to appointment reminder. Uh, most people don't need to use this. The, the default usually works just fine. If you need some help, reach out to us on that. And then lastly, some integration stuff. This is where you can connect your Zoom meeting and or Google Meet to automatically schedule appointments with that. So I hope that helps give a little more clarity to the booking pages. Um, if you need any help with this, reach out to us. Uh, this is Lee with appointmentreminder.com signing off. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.